Hello everyone, welcome to lesson eight in Heaven is Calling. I am going to get right to it in a moment here, but first I want to tell you about a couple of really cool things. One is that I have the biggest giveaway going that I have ever done. And if you are watching this before August 18th, 2016, you should head over to giveaway.rebeccarjones.com and you can enter and I'll tell you about it at the end as well. And the reason is, is because I am announcing my new course, Page Prep. So go to pageprep.com and you can see the details about that as I release it. So now on to this challenge. Here we are in Heaven is Calling Lesson 8. I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit different and because I am doing a bit of things on page prep, I'm going to show you what the true purpose of Claire Gesso is all about and I'm going to do some paper crafting, some mixed media, and die cutting, fun stuff like that. So I've got this really fun paper pad. Um, I've got another set of this in the giveaway. It's over $400 worth of stuff, all for Bible journaling to get you started with illustrated faith stuff and it, you, know, you name it, and a scholarship to my course. So you can get this paper pad um, with that set of stuff. So what you're going to do is if you wanted to follow along with what I was doing, you can just kind of mark the size of your Bible with the paper that you want to use and then just cut it to size. And I'm just making a mark for how far I want to go in because I didn't want to cut through the whole thing in case I want that long piece for something else. So I'm getting it ready to be able to put in. And I did make a few mistakes in that I have not excluded. I've put them straight in here and I'm going to talk you through them because I think it's important always that you feel that you can follow along with how to do things differently. But sure, I'm just wanting to show you there that basically when you use a thick die cut or a die like you can see me using there, it replaces the platform if you're using this big shot machine like me. So I can take it out and then use the, the thick die and then I can replace it when I'm done. So I'm doing a tag here because I wanted to trace it along and I probably could have made this a lot easier on myself by just putting a tag on top of my project, but I wanted to kind of create a cutout window of a tag behind the cutout window. I have no idea why, but it sounded fun. So I went for it and it created a lot of complicated work for me, but it was kind of fun. So I like to challenge myself with creativity and I'm going to tell you all about the scripture that this is all about in a bit here. So what I did is I cut that out and then there is the window that is going to be behind it is going to be this other paper. And I put that there so I would know where I am and then I can take it off and just mark what's going on kind of roughly in that area. And then I will know where I want my tag to be in that area. So then I can set it all aside and get ready to do things. So the mistake one is that I decided to put that back piece on there. And actually, it was a bad idea because I have always said that three layers is as thick as you want to go when you're trying to add layers to your Bible. And actually, it is three layers, but you only want two layers when you are choosing to do a full page thickness. So the third thickness can only be for the kind of extra things that you're putting on top, like these little bits of die cut. That's where the third layer comes in. You really don't want anything that doesn't bend properly. And so I have made this too thick and I just wanted some cute paper on the back and I'm okay with that. I will live with it. My Bible will live through it. And it's part of the process of learning and enjoying this. So I'm just kind of designing out ideas as I go and this is my thick big die for a smaller tag so I can put a smaller tag in there. I love to use my die cutting machine, but it's important to me that anytime I buy a die, it's going to have more than one use to me or that I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it because I don't really think that 
it's good to have dice if you're not going to use them properly because it's a lot of investment otherwise. So I'm putting these on sideways and I'm just showing you that that just kind of moves around. So I have a magnetic platform. Not everybody uses these. You certainly don't have to, but you can see how strong that magnet is. So the sandwich is you put your platform down, whichever one you're going to use, magnetic, regular, or big style, whatever, and then you put your plastic down, and then you put your paper down, and then you put your die on top of it, cutting down into the paper. And I reserve one plate for cutting and one that's clear and clean like that. And you put that clear plate on top and roll it through. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to keep that piece of paper and you'll see me use it later. And here I am just poking it through with a little punch and then I just take some time to kind of think through my ideas as I go. Now when we do page prep inside of a Bible, we put this clear layer down and it means that we can create on top and nothing will happen to it. But that's not actually what clear gesso was originally intended for. And I've got these couple brands here that I really particularly like. And because they're super smooth and it means you can go in with your different products on top, like those felt tip pens uh, for Faber-Castell and it won't hurt them. And it just gives you this nice smooth texture. But this is what they're actually meant for is you put them over other surfaces. surfaces and as you can see, I haven't actually obstructed the view of the paper. You can still see the design perfectly because it's clear. And now I don't have a porous paper. I have what is actually just like a page prepped Bible. And now that I'm working on the back side and gluing on that piece that I really shouldn't have glued on, um, it, I am actually gluing it with a matte gel medium, which is a glue. And so when you glue something, you're supposed to glue both sides and you have to work rapidly because it dries quickly, especially when you have an older bottle, it's a little bit drier. So you have to kind of do the fast thing and get going on there and then just line up your edges and go for it. When you glue both sides, you're ensured of it being a lot more intact with each other. And then you just spread it out from the middle with a smooth surface like a little room key like that and then you're good to go. So now I'm putting gesso on top of the front of my little tag uh, cover there and then putting that in place and I glued the back but I put gesso on the front. It's really important that you clean your blending tool as soon as you're done so it doesn't dry. But as you can see, it's completely not porous on the regular paper. But now that I've put this on, I can actually spread it around for the first two or three seconds before it dries. And it's important that you move fast. And it's also important that you don't let the color of the Faber-Castell pit pens especially to get built up on your fingers. You'll see me looking at my fingers occasionally and what ends up happening is if you build the color up on your fingers, the ink will actually kind of build up past your fingerprint and then it will start to smear less nicely and you won't get the kind of beautiful smooth texture that you're after. So what you want to do is make sure and keep your hands washed. I actually went away and washed some dishes for a bit and then came back and then I had some good clean fingers to work with. And you could probably achieve this with some archival ink, which you can see later. The darker I go, the harder it is to blend it. And that's okay. I just want to start with a lighter color and build up darker and darker until I'm happy with it. So as I just do that, I will tell you a little bit about this scripture. So I'm in Esther chapter four, and I have already done something creative on this before, and I did it in my scrapbook.com course, which you can look at. I will link to that on the blog post. And if you're on YouTube, just look in the description box below and I will lead you over to where that is in my blog post. So when you look at my page, there is already something there. And I, of course, have done something on it before, but sometimes we actually just find something inspires us and we want to do more or we have further thoughts about a scripture, which I was thinking, you know, that happens to us sometimes and we want to add a bit more. So we're going for it. 
And you can see that I didn't get a brilliant little smooth texture there at the very end of my blending, which happened as a result of me letting it build up on my fingers with that ink. So that's what you wanna do, but it's okay because I've got a die cut going right over the top of it and I'm not bothered at all. This isn't about perfection. This is about spending time in the word. I say it every time and I hope that you believe it. It's really important that we just enjoy the process of being in God's word and let it renew and transform our lives. So what we um, have is basically a page that has already been created on. I've already talked about this before in one of my classes, but I wanted to talk about it because I think I was just looking at it fresh today. I actually went and listened to the entire book of Esther on an audio Bible again. I wanted to just get some context for everything. And I really found that it's actually really speaking interestingly about the kind of man that Esther was a queen to. She was actually really married to quite the man. He's a unique individual to say the least. You can see here, I saved that bit that the paper was cut out of and by putting it in there I can kind of preserve it and it's not as complicated to keep it safe while I'm adding color to it. So that's why I saved it. So anyway, I was actually really finding it interesting. Of course, you know, Esther was one of many wives that King Xerxes had and he would choose to bring her in when he wanted and, you know, this whole thing happened where Haman, who was in authority, managed to plot to wipe out the Jews. And she was asked by her uncle, Mordecai, to go and to take care of the situation by going to the king and telling him what this plot was about and said, you know, don't think that just because you are one of the wives of the king that you're going to be saved. You and your family will be wiped out because of this. And she went ahead and bravely decided after some fasting to go for it. And you know, she was very timid and she had a couple of different banquets for him before she got the courage to say something. And, you know, understandably, she hadn't even seen him in a month and he could favor any one of his wives. It, he wasn't necessarily a good man. She had been picked as a, as his companion and that was as simple as it was. So I think that sometimes we get the idea that she was just going to her husband when actually their arrangement was a lot more complicated than that. And I think that the bravery that Esther showed was really important. And, you know, that's why I've got this little die cut here that says, remember this moment. I want to remember how important it is to actually take you know, I want to remember this moment where she was brave and she made a decision to step out and do something that was outside of her comfort zone. And it was actually, you know, could have led to her death. And, you know, if you look in Esther for verses 13 through 16, you can see that I'm really not going to have a lot of time to talk about things over on my blog post today, but I am going to link to all the supplies I used and, and to the new course and to the giveaway and all of that kind of stuff so you can see all of it but what I wanted to talk to you about here was just the value of taking that lesson from her the bravery that she incurred you know we are all called to change the world in some way we are world changers and it may be just our corner of the world and it may be as dramatic as saving our own people like her but whatever the case is, we're, we're always meant to impact the world around us in some way. And I think that that is a really, really important thing for us to remember is that there is some significance there. As you can see, I'm doing a test run with all sorts of pens trying to decide which one is dry or wet, which one has the right coloring that I like. Those were my brown pens to work with. And I made sure and dried this because glue and felt tip pens are not happy companions. Be sure to ensure that everything is dry. 
I thought that I had and I started to notice that the juice was running low on my pen and it's a very juicy pen from what you can see at the beginning. So I went ahead and started drying it some more because I don't want any of that matte gel medium or gesso to start to come into the pen and that's what it was starting to do and that's why it was going dry. So if you've got problems with gesso and pens, that is why you make sure it's very, very dry. So that is what I did. And you're probably wondering how I'm actually gonna get this into my Bible. I have shown this process before. I just took some time to you know think about what this means to me and what I felt this scripture really meant. And you can see that's the piece of artwork that I did in the previous one. And after just contemplating that, I just wrote myself a note here on this little tag to go along with this to just remind myself that it is my job to impact the world around me, to be brave and to you know stay connected to this good God who helps make all of this possible. You know, heaven is calling is all about connecting with a good God. And he's the one that makes it possible for us to impact the world around us. And that's what this is about. So I think that actually Esther is a great example of somebody who connected with a good God. She stayed in, you know, she fasted and prayed for three days just before going into the king. She wanted to make sure that she knew what to do. And she acted in God's authority because she knew what, would be the right decision to make in these different situations. As you can see, this is quite thick and I'm sure that if I had left the back off, then it would have been much better with just the two layers of the thickness. So that's what I would recommend that you do is not get carried away with color in the back. And you know, it's okay. I don't mind testing out new things and showing you guys what happens when those things happen. So this is called zips and it's just a little line of glue. So I've just lined it up with the back of my thing there and it is super, super strong. So I'm just going to peel it off gently and then it's just a nice line of glue. You can see the shininess there. And then I've got this thing, watch my hands as I do this. I need to peel it back and get it really far in there. So what I'm gonna do is put my bottom of my hands there and my pinkies are gonna stretch the other side out of the way. And then I get it in there and I sandwich it over and just give it a nice good press and it's in. So that is how to do that. As I wrap up, I just wanna remind you that it is your time to start creating. Get in the word, get into the scripture and start creating. Hop over to our Facebook page, group, all of the things that we've got going on. All of that is linked in the description box if you're on YouTube and over on my blog post, you'll find all of those details, including the details for the new course that I've got coming up. You can register your interest for it at pageprep.com. And don't forget that I have a giveaway and it is super exciting to be giving over $400 worth of fun stuff today. So giveaway.rebeccarjones. See you soon.